Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, I haven't done a walk and talk in a long, long time. Today, we're going to talk about the vegan diet and what options do you truly have. In the beginning, many people by default try junk food veganism. And nobody is to be blamed here because, of course, in the beginning you want to experiment with all the culinary finesse of veganism. You want to see what the vegan cuisine has to offer. I was there myself. In the beginning you want to try the vegan burgers, you want to try the vegan pastry, the vegan ice cream, the vegan cakes and whatnot. And to your surprise, they taste delicious. Many people are surprised in the beginning especially that pastry or cakes can taste so amazing without dairy and without eggs. I was there myself as I said. But after a while experimenting with all of those junk foods, you realize that only because it's vegan doesn't mean that it is healthy of course. A vegan junk food diet is not the way to go. So you start researching the fields. The vegan doctors. What does Gregor say? What does Esselstyn say? What does McDougall claim? You find out that a low-fat, high-carb vegan diet is the way to go. The healthiest diet on the planet is a high-carb, low-fat vegan diet. It reverses heart disease. So, in the beginning, you feel better. Why is that so? Of course, you remove the junk again and on top of that, you removed all the inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids. But now you're left with the inflammatory grains. They still contain anti-nutrients, they still contain gluten and whatnot. You're left with a high amount of anti-nutrients in your diet. Selectively, you've discarded all the healthy foods and you're sticking only with grains and starches. By that default, you will ingest a lot of anti-nutrients, a lot of high inflammatory foods. But as I said, the omega-6s are out of the window. So you removed one problematic food group. So after a while, you start feeling bad again. Maybe you still have inflammation or worse than that, you're experiencing low libido. You experience menstrual loss, like many women out there, because you have no fats in your diet that are supportive of your hormonal health. So what do you do next? Maybe now you will decide to reintroduce the healthy fats, the fats out of nuts and seeds and avocados. Pretty soon you will realize that you just reintroduced the omega-6s again. You are combining the omega-6 fatty acids with the inflammatory carbohydrates. You're setting yourself up for failure. That is the worst diet. So the only choice here after reintroducing the fats and seeing their benefits is to remove carbohydrates, to remove gluten or to go ketogenic, vegan keto diet all together. This is where you experience a little bit relief because, as I mentioned, the anti-nutrients in the grains, the inflammatory factors and the allergens are removed, but you find yourself in a world of inflammation again because all you have left is inflammatory omega-6 fats in your diet. So now you might question the whole vegan diet altogether. What is there left to do, right? You tried the fat approach, you tried the carb approach, maybe it is the cooked food, maybe this is what is plaguing you. And intuitively, that is a right decision, that is the right way to go. Because let's face it, all of those grains and starches can lead to many, many complications. So now you go raw vegan and many people find themselves in the same problematic scenario as they were in when they started trying veganism out in the beginning. So you find yourself in the raw vegan gourmet world. The raw vegan gourmet world where you can have the raw vegan pizzas, the raw vegan candies, the raw vegan cakes, the raw vegan nice cream and whatnot. So you're ingesting again junk food, but you call it another name. You call it raw veganism. And by that default, you have the assumption again that that must be healthy now. Of course, that couldn't be further from the truth. You find yourself facing issues again. So now you have to remove food groups. You find yourself in the same vicious circle of removing food groups and optimizing nutrition. 
all you're left with pretty much now is to go fruitarian. And when you go fruitarian, many people experience this. Out of a sudden, they feel like they found the holy grail of veganism. The true species-specific diet. Why is that so? Guys, when you remove all of those inflammatory plant foods and you're eating only fruits, yes, you did one thing right. Fruits do not contain any anti-nutrients. Fruits do not tax your system. Fruits are not destructive to your system. But fruits do not contain any nutrition other than a little bit of vitamin C and hydration. So now you face the issue of complete malnourishment. Protein is lacking, DHA, EPA is lacking, minerals are lacking. You are low in every single imaginable micronutrient. But, as I said, you're not poisoning yourself with lectins, oxalates and whatnot. Hence, you feel better. Hence, you have the assumption that you found the species-specific diet. After a while though, as I said, you will start starving yourself out. The only thing that is left now, many people go through that vicious circle, they're already in starvation mode, they're already in fasting mode, and now the only logical solution in that scenario is to go on further fast. So now they might decide to do a juice fast or water fast. And now, now they feel really amazing. Because now they removed the last factor that was agitating their health. The last factor being the fiber. Now you removed all the anti-nutrients, now you removed all the omega-6s that were plaguing you and on top of that you removed the fiber that was detrimental to your health. All of those problematic food groups are removed and you find yourself in starvation mode where you feel the best. The vegan diet is only suitable short term because short term you can go into those catabolic phases where you can remove all the nutritious food groups and you will feel healthier, you will detoxify your body. This is what the vegan diet truly is. It is a short term detox intervention. But now let's talk about long term. How can you achieve the same thing with a diet that is nourishing your body? Guys, you can achieve the same things. You can remove the oxalates, the salicylates, you can remove the omega-6s and you can remove the fiber by replacing all of those toxic plant foods with animal products, nourishing animal products. Animal products come by default with no fiber, with no excess omega-6s if you choose wisely and you're not buying from the animal agriculture. You will get all the nutrition that you need, all the essential fatty acids and all the essential amino acids. It comes in a beautiful package with no excess fiber and with no anti-nutrients. This is the benefit of the carnivore diet and this is what subconsciously many vegans are looking for. I heard so many stories, so many success stories from people reaching out to me and telling me, Bobby, all I was looking for, all I was seeking within veganism, I found in the carnivore diet. All right, guys, and this is it for today's walk and talk video. Let me know in the comments down below if you like this style of video. I know the sound isn't as crisp. There's a lot of background sound going on. I personally enjoy it a lot. It is quite pleasurable to go for a walk and be productive for YouTube as well. So let me know down below if you like those videos. If so, leave me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And as always, guys, much love and peace.